Blog Talk Radio. Hello, greetings, Michael. Welcome to this episode. Yes, thank you. Awesome. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty there, but I'd like to uh, just give a warm welcome. I'm honored to have this special guest with us. Um, it's an honor and a privilege. He's such an outgoing, experienced hemp entrepreneur on today's hemp episode and uh, someone who's been the change in the world that he wanted to see. And he's developed multiple hemp companies, toured with hemp legend Jack Herrer, contributed to major initiatives in Colorado, uh, among other states. And is, he's actually now on the front line in Arizona spreading the good news about cannabis hemp with the people while collecting signatures and educating and transforming lives all along the way. Uh, but before we uh, bring on Michael and, and get into the show, uh, I just want to introduce myself, Tyler Hemp with Hemp Aware Radio and Hemp aware.com where you can actually discover valuable resources about hemp and what it can do for you, your family, your community and you know be a renewable, sustainable resource and economically sound resource for food, shelter, clothing and ultimately 25,000 other things. You can find a copy of each hemp episode on iTunes podcast library as well as hempaware.com forward slash radio. And feel free to share these shows with your friends and family and spread the good news about the change that you want to see in the world. And now I want to give a special thank you for joining us on today's hemp episode. Very special guest, Michael Jacobs, on behalf of Hemp Our World. Welcome aboard, Michael. Thank you. What a wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. And I'm uh, very much enjoying having arrived recently in the last two weeks in Arizona as you said, to work with Hemp Our World and our ballot initiative and to organize and continue our efforts after the election. Very cool. Well, I'd love to get into that, but before we do, uh, get into hempourworld.org and, and and what you're up to you know, with all the initiatives. Share a little bit about your experience, you know, what your, your vision for this life and a uh, you know, just a brief intro about who mm-hmm. you are, why you're here, and why you do what you do. Yes, okay. Uh, so once again, I'm I'm Michael Jacobs, and as you mentioned, I've been involved in this movement for decades and uh, did my graduate studies in uh, Southern Illinois, Carbondale at SIU, and specialized in political communication. Um Basically, having worked in Kentucky, Colorado, Montana, and hemp tours since the 80s, I'm excited to continue my activities and to win our ballot initiative. And um, it's a really good fit for me here because it's a real grassroots effort and um, nice to be involved from the inception of the campaign through its completion. Mhm. Mhm. So, so you've been on the front lines, getting signatures, traveled with Jack Herrer. You've you've uh, just had your own hemp companies. I mean, you've been involved in many different aspects of this cannabis plant and the industry itself, and in its many facets. So, how now has it all kind of culminated into Hemp Our World, and what's the mission and vision for Hemp Our World? Sure. Um, uh, my impetus for doing this work, incidentally, is basically to save the planet, damn it. That's <laughs> that's sort of my theme. Um, and I do feel uh, moral outrage over the state of affairs uh, ever since Reefer Madness. And, uh, you know, I had lots of occasions with Jack Herrera, both during Hemp Tour and afterwards. And basically, he told me never to stop fighting the ignorance out there. And I I told him, okay, so I'm still at it. Um, I really enjoy movement politics. It's an opportunity to uh, be involved in change that often takes decades and sometimes preferable to just working for a candidate, I would say. Um, Mm -hmm. And I must say that things would be much worse if we weren't raising a stink and we have a great deal of momentum going right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, 
you know, I'm certainly not alone in this. Uh, the movement is growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so much happening on the global, our federal, and our local level. And all your listeners, no matter where you are, can get involved at some level. Exactly, exactly. And I so, do want to talk about that in just a moment, uh, you know, as far as what people can, can physically do or, you know, do today. But before we do, I want to talk to you a little bit more about some of your favorite aspects of how hemp has been in our history. What are some of those sure. major memorable, you know, historical hemp moments that you that you, you know, like to remind people of? Yeah, I'll I'll address that, and I'll tell your listeners a little bit more about Hemp Our World and uh, what you guys can do on your level, too. But uh, let's see. I think it was around 1988 or so that I got involved uh, after my graduate studies and uh, joined up with the Cannabis Action Network in Kentucky. Kentucky, uh, as you know, is uh, on the front lines right now of leading the efforts to uh, end prohibition on hemp. Mm -hmm. And I found it wonderful to be based out there, helping to run the Cannabis Action Network's hemp tour across America, traveling with Jack Herrera. We we were on an old hemp farm, actually, in Kentucky. And uh, at that time, I also had an opportunity to interview one of the last living Kentucky hemp seed farmers, who had been a child in the in the 30s and raising hemp and got a tremendous interview from him. I'm looking forward to publishing soon, actually. And any of your listeners in Kentucky might be particularly interested. Yeah, but, we do have listeners in Kentucky that and and people you know that are ordering hemp herd and and um, they want to start growing it locally again. And that's such a, a cool story. You you may have got uh, one of the last hemp Kentucky farmers. On record, which is, I would love to experience that. Maybe share it with our so, listeners. Yeah, the the stories there are long. Um, <laughs> I I enjoyed coming across uh, looking in an old bookstore, an old used bookstore in Kentucky. Found uh, a book I had vaguely heard of, very hard to find. Had been out of print for probably fifty years. It was printed on hemp paper. And it was about, it was sort of a uh, a silly story, but about hemp farming activities of that day, not particularly well written, but an artifact. And I enjoyed selling it. Actually, Jack Herrera noticed that I had a copy of it and begged me, and I sold it to him. <laughs> and I think it might end up in the new hemp museum that I noticed Jeannie Herrera is yeah. putting together. Mm-hmm. So uh, awesome. I want to visit wow. that someday. And we are incidentally putting together our own traveling hemp museum for uh, the events that we'll be at, including a hemp stock event we're organizing in May. And yep. uh, do uh, accept contributions towards that and stuff. Yeah, check out hemparworld.org. Yes. Go support them, give them donations, give them your support. And uh, tell us a little bit more so about, you know, the the legal canvas of, you know, hemp globally and locally. Maybe we can start getting into a little bit more sure. specifically what people yeah. do in your area or their local area. I would refer people to uh, our our website, including my website, which I just p- try to put everything that's current up on that. And that's Michael Jacobs. Uh, you can... Uh, I want to give out my email. Anyone's welcome to contact me and hook up with me on Facebook. Uh, And that's MLJMLJ8 at Gmail. Um, Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, There are so many things. I I am particularly interested in what's happening on the federal level, but we have a development in Arizona I'll get to. Um, As your listeners probably know, and I'm glad I don't have to give a Hemp 101 your Listeners are informed, but um, there is the Senate and House versions that uh, are moving forward quickly with lots of bipartisan support, and uh, you should follow the details on that and um, encourage your uh, 
representatives to support that. Um, mm-hmm. And more specifically, it's uh, the uh, oh, I have here the Senate Bill 134 Industrial Hemp Farming Act, and there's also the the House version, and um, which has 48 co-sponsors. I'll I'll mention that was introduced by Thomas Mussey. Um, mm-hmm. So all your listeners probably either know about this, but could use some encouragement in supporting that. Locally in Arizona, we have uh, bipartisan support for introducing a, a research study, a, a pilot program like exists in many states, but their legislature is not going to move for lifting the prohibition of hemp farming. So we are going to move forward with our ballot initiative. And that is um, under introduced by Hemp Our World. And we have a, a political pack organized called How Arizona. And uh, we'll be promoting uh, through the donations we get that will go to support the Arizona Industrial Hemp Farming Act, which is the awesome. title for our ballot proposal. Wonderful. All right. Um, And then there's all the questions as to how you can get involved and such. I can encourage people on that. And, again, everyone check out our website. And uh, we do have a a, a further mission also for Hemp Our World I'd like to get into. Yes, please. All right. Let me go for that now. So, basically, what we want to do is, win the election, but also um, continue our efforts that we started a couple of years ago to unify the industry locally, nationally, and internationally, and encourage high standards for hemp um, operations. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the standards are something that more and more people can begin to look at um, once prohibition uh, is lifted. We also have a uh, parcel uh, some land in Colorado. We plan on planting uh, hemp this spring and working towards uh, bringing a side project together called Starstruck, which will be a hemp underwear company to further support our efforts um, to maintain uh, a presence in promoting the hemp industry. Uh, growth in Arizona and globally after we win the election. And we have a component that we'd like to include whenever possible to have fun with our efforts and spread the message, including art, music, and film. Uh, Mm -hmm. We're uh, participating in a film festival next week in Sedona, for example, and Mm -hmm. uh, co-promoting a event in May, uh, Mother's Day weekend called Hempstock, which uh, we will bring more details out uh, shortly, probably next week. Yeah, check out hempourworld.org. And you can also, if you have a hemp company yourself and you're you know, wanting to keep building that network and get your, your brand out there, connect with Michael, uh, email him today or go to hempourworld.org and talk to him about how uh, you guys can connect with affiliate links or, you know, they, they're they always connecting and getting the word out there. So if you have an affiliate link for your site or you wanted to uh, get involved, make a donation and maybe put your logo on their website, uh, they also have sections for that to, to just help keep building the, the hemp net, the hemp network. Yes. I would like to even uh, mention uh, we are very actively uh seeking and acquiring sponsors and affiliates and you can join in on those and uh, right now we're uh, finalizing our sponsorship with American Green. They've already promised to at the least uh, do all our printing for us in negotiation with some hemp paper companies and such and big thanks to Hempful Farms which is opening their place in Phoenix, Phoenix, February 18th, and yeah. they are sponsoring us, and it's a great hemp cafe, and uh, we'll be able to use them some as a resource. Uh, also, 
a big thanks to Hemp Mayor Adam Gower and Camp 420 and the Rocky Mountain Hemp Association. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, please. Uh, we are such a grassroots organization right now and basically broke. <laughs> we do want to encourage volunteers that we can use in all sorts of capacities. We will be hiring people as we build up our account because we will need circulators and such, so you can stay tuned for that. We would like to increase our affiliates. We would like to increase our sponsors. And uh, some of our affiliates, for example, uh, include uh, uh, Manitoba uh, Hemp and... uh, Royal Robins, Hemp Dog Cafe, Hemp Farms... Royal Robbins, yes. And um, also the Ad Busters Black Spot Unswoosher Hemp Shoes, which are very cool. The Ono Bamboo and Hemp Shirts, Hinky Imports, mm-hmm. Hemp Traders, BuyGreen.com, Manitoba yeah. Harvest, big thanks. So everybody, uh, if you would like to get on in on the act, <clears throat> we are a grassroots campaign. We don't have the support right now of uh some of the uh oh let's see say uh some of the giant sponsors out there f- that have supported uh some of the MPP programs for example mm-hmm. anyway we'd like everybody to get on this bandwagon and it's one state at a time um we are a movement do what you can in your community and uh think globally Absolutely. And this is, you know, Hemp Aware. It's, it's all about spreading the awareness, the knowledge, the information. And sometimes people in these fields, you know, education, a lot of teachers, a lot of educators, you'll find all across the board are not pay, being paid what they're worth. And so I think the whole world is changing. Not only are our values changing as far as what we put on our bodies, into our bodies, but also who we pay in our life because money and, and Federal Reserve notes, those those you know that currency is is where it goes is what we value. So by investing in hemp, by investing hemp educators, by investing in hemp activists, and, and putting our our dollars in places that we value, it's literally going to create a paradigm shift on the planet, and it's going to provide so much more opportunity for people to to become creative. and and create abundance from the inside out in alliance with this amazing God-given plant, cannabis hemp, and all of its amazing uses. Um, So I I would love to hear, Michael, what some of the, you know, strategies you use for, um, you know, getting signatures or, you know, strategies for for writing initiatives for, for ballots and, um, you know, do you kind of have a system that you plug into, or is it just um, you know something you you've had experience with in terms of organizing and emailing people or collecting mm-hmm. signatures online, or how, how do you kind of go about it logistically? Well, <laughs> that's a long story there, but um, I I must say that there are different ways to go about that depending on the uh, campaign and. In a large initiative state like California and in one where there is a lot of controversy, uh, you might need to raise up to $2 million uh, to run a successful campaign or to Mm -hmm. really compete. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at in Arizona is more grassroots, and I don't think we are going to have so much opposition and, and blocking as much as uh, the need to mobilize people and um, get them aware of the issue. Um, We will need to collect hundreds of thousands of signatures. They will have to be valid ones. So along with um, collecting those signatures, I intend to also do voter registration and do that in English and Spanish and make sure uh, people not only um, send a petition but get out and vote. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will seek editorial um, support from newspapers, etc. 
We have mm-hmm. some initial support from the Arizona Farm Bureau. I would like to also um, enlist union support, which I've made some outreach to. Awesome. And uh, build coalitions also. We, um, for example, tomorrow I'm going to the Phoenix Cannabis, um, uh, what is it, Phoenix PCC, whatever that stands for, um, okay. and have been going to MPP meetings, et cetera. So uh, working with them, they have their own ballot initiative. Uh, finding it necessary at this point to um, recognize our cannab- uh, all of our cannabis cousins, but also to um, make sure that uh, marijuana efforts don't impinge our efforts and work carefully to support one another, but also um, keep some distance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, keep, keep, <laughs> you know? keep the plants separate. <laughs> well, mean, yes, work together. I think there will be times, and this is one of my biggest challenges, is, which is why I'm mentioning it. Um, we're cousins. We support one another. Personally, I think in Arizona, uh, our hemp bill will be less controversial and has a better chance of passing. And um, that uh, perhaps, without sounding too arrogant, MPP might need us more than we need them, but we we want to work with them. So it's one of the challenges of politics and coalition building. And, and that's how it's going to work is by um, – uh, we'll we'll take the high road and train our people very well, and um, I'm looking forward to having a hemp suit made, so I can uh, uh, look look well uh, mm-hmm. at events and such, and also demonstrate our commitment and uh, make it demonstrative. So Absolutely. anyway, we have our work cut out, no doubt, <clears throat> and. Uh, People who uh, want to be involved in a leadership capacity um, should contact us. Wonderful. Yeah, if you're a young entrepreneur, if you're getting out of college or still in college and you're looking for an internship or a way to contribute to the hemp movement and get involved, check out Hemp Our World. Give Michael a call today. Um, You know, get involved. Do whatever you can to bring resources, bring your awareness, your creativity to the hemp industry so that we can all be wearing custom-tailored hemp outfits that are sexy and amazing, made out of all the highest fine, you know, um, fine textiles, hemp and and regalia. Uh, Because we're all, you know, all worthy of it, and we all deserve amazingness and to be healthy and wealthy (laughs) and happy and holy, so... I'm excited to connect with Hemp Our World. I'm so thankful that you are on the show with us today. And if um, you know you have any last comments or anything that you want to share, if there was one thing people can do today, um, or are, are you going to be collecting uh, signatures at your event in May, or is there uh, a place where they? Oh can yes, send in the next in the next week or two, we'll have our uh, ballot proposals printed on hemp blend paper. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wanted to also mention that uh, we do now have uh, a group we can affiliate with at Arizona State University, and it, uh, we are going to be um, seeking internships and formalizing all of that. Been here two weeks now and taking care of putting all our ducks in a row and uh, really going full-fledged in the next week or two. You'll uh, see us out circulating and make sure you only sign once, no matter what your enthusiasm is. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you sign more than once, it it, it voids. It invalidates it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. To know. So it's something to know. It's true in every state. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for joining us on today's show, and uh, I look forward to seeing the success of Hemp Our World. Go to hempourworld.org. Give them a call. Check out their their affiliate links and um, get get involved. Whatever you can do. If you have a hemp company or you're a young hemp entrepreneur and you'd like to be on Hemp Aware Radio, give us a call at eight zero five four ten four three six seven or email us at hempaware at gmail dot com. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, 
people would like to call in in the future, uh, the call-in number is 347-215-8389. And I want to give a special thank you one more time to Michael Jacobs for joining us on today's show. Thank you, brother. Thank you, and stay hemp aware. Peace. All right. Much love. Peace.